Welcome to the Chase Benefice Online. As we continue during the Easter season, we come to one of the most loved and enduring images of Christ, as a shepherd that we recognise and follow, and from whose care we can never be torn away. And we continue as we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of this week's Collect. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your Father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Liz is now going to read this week's Gospel. A reading from the Gospel of John. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. Hello. The lesson this morning reminds us about what kind of life we are offered by Christ and what is important for us to do in order to sustain our life that Christ offers. The lesson talks about Jesus being in the temple at the festival of the dedication. The festival of the dedication was the last of the Jewish festivals that was established and it happened as a result of the temple being defiled by Antiochus Epiphanes between 170 and 164 BC, as he tried to impose on the Jews the Greek religion and Greek culture, and in doing so, defiled the temple by doing things like offering, making offerings to the god Zeus on the high altar in the temple and turning the chambers of the temple into brothels. Judas Maccabeus and his brothers initiated the Maccabean Revolt, and that ended with a victory which enabled them to re-establish the temple, to purify the building, to rebuild the high altar, to get new vessels and new roads, and re-establish the Jewish faith again. And so comes into being the festival of dedication. It was also called Hanukkah, or the Festival of Lights, because at the beginning of the dedication of the festival, there were lights that were used, great illuminations in the temple itself, but also in each Jewish home on each night of the festival for eight days, one candle and then another was lit until all eight candles burned to remind the people that God had come back to them, that they now had the light and the freedom to worship God according to their faith. And John also tells us in this lesson that Jesus was walking up and down in the portico of Solomon. That particular area of the temple was used by people to go and pray and meditate and by rabbis to teach their disciples as they walked up and down. The group that gathers around Jesus asks him the question, are you the Messiah? Jesus does not give them a direct answer. He challenges them to look, to see, to listen and to hear. And he says to them quite clearly that if you look and you see what I am doing, 
you will see that I am doing what the prophets said would happen when the Messiah come. The blind would see, the lame would walk, and all those recreative things would happen with the coming of the Messiah. And also he challenges them to listen and to hear what he is saying as he gives them deeper insights into what the Jewish faith meant. And so we are challenged too to look and see what God is doing in the world around us, what he is doing in our own lives, to listen and to hear what people are saying to us in the name of Christ, and also to speak freely of what God is doing in our lives to others. That is how we continue to support our life in Christ, that life which Jesus tells us, and he uses the analogy of the sheep and the shepherd, that life is a life that is full of caring by God. As a shepherd cares for his sheep, he feeds them, he leads them, so God does that for our lives. And our lives are also without end. We are not threatened by physical death. We see it and it happens and we are saddened by it, but we rise in thanksgiving at the life of everyone who has gone before us and our own time will come. But also, we are told that we are secure. Nothing will snatch the flock from Jesus' hand. We are secure that if we follow Christ to the best of our ability, inspired and strengthened by the Holy Spirit, our lives will have meaning, our lives will be fulfilling, and we will be able to rejoice with others as we understand the glory of God in the world and in our lives. Amen. Deborah is going to lead us now in prayer. Let us pray. Good Shepherd, be our guide. Lead us out of darkness and fear 
and into the joy of your presence. We pray for all who have the care of your people, that they may be guided by your wisdom and offer hope, compassion and strength. Faithful shepherd, you know us and we will follow you. We pray for those who work in education, in healthcare, social work and counselling. We remember those who support and pray for others and encourage them in difficult times. We ask your blessing upon our communities, our homes and our loved ones. Faithful shepherd, you know us and we will follow you. We pray for all who have lost direction, for all who have lost faith in themselves, in the world and in their God. We pray for the despondent and the despairing, that they may know that God searches for them and loves them. Faithful shepherd, you know us and we will follow you. We pray for those who are ill or struggling at this time, who face the future with fear or anxiety, and all who have lost loved ones. We remember those who have died recently and commend them to your loving mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we come to the peace. Jesus is the good shepherd and leads us into the way of peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you for joining us for our service today. There will be another online service next week for those who cannot join us for worship in person at our 10 a.m. communion service at St. Ken Elms Church, Enstone. Details of how to join our online and in-person services are on the bulletin at our website. And don't forget that all of our churches are open each day between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. for personal prayer and quiet reflection. And so our service ends now with a blessing. The faithful shepherd protect you from all evil, strengthen you with his goodness, lead you to the fullness of his love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Mm -hmm.